Hey, Brian's here. Uh, we're extremely uh, uh, amazed by our success in the other video and how people actually loved it, where we had the uh, eight layers of lamination over the uh, hard wood shield and the reinforcements with the uh, rawhide. And the whole goal of that test was to see if we could go through that shield and into a person. So going through that into the ballistic shell was the main point. Uh, Larika Hamada was bought in mail, although it was really heavy gauge mail. It's not used historically, we said that. Uh, today we have our silver soldered mail. Uh, probably not totally historical either for a European male, a lot of it wasn't silver soldered, but it's even tougher, it's even harder to break a ring because it's like they're all sealed rings. Instead of having solid rings that are stamped, solid rings, and then riveted rings every other row, which is the best male you could get, most of the Lorica Hamada were made that way, uh, we have solid rings. Every ring is solid. And the greatest silver we used, it is equal to the ring itself almost, the, the how thick it is. So we've got that. Under that we've got our shirt from last time. Uh, and then under that, we're placing our ballistics gel, which is a 20% ballistics you know, gelatin inside, which we use in this other video. It's still got plenty left to it. It's perfect. Uh, and then we're going to put 10 layers of a heavy gambeson-like cloth. That would equal the garments that the, uh, uh, the actual uh, legionnaires would have worn, possibly, if they were to find it where they allowed that underneath. So we've got a really good test set up. Uh, if this type of point, this pyramid point on this uh, Adrian Watson's best, I consider this the best one he made, the best pila for a later century armor piercing model, uh, can go through, we'll find out. That's I'm excited myself to find out. Let's see what happens. We'll go ahead and take some throws at it and see if we can actually pierce mail that's equal to historical mail. All right, I'm going to start off with just a throw without stepping forward like a, a traditional javelin throw because they might not have had that luxury. They might have been throwing from behind their uh, uh, scutum. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here in this kind of style and just throw directly to it with a hip rotation. See what we get. Oh! oh! Now that is as much power as I can get from that type of throw. But I think we hit it. Right on the gel. No penetration. No penetration whatsoever. I can't even see exactly where we hit it, but it bounced right out. So if you had a proper Lorica and the rivet did not break, because remember this does not have rivets, this is solid rings, the entire thing, bounced right out. It was not able to penetrate it. We'll try a more powerful throw and see what's, what happens next. All right, I'm gonna try to give this as much power as possible, hit the same spot, and see if it's possible to break one of those rings. I, I'm highly doubting at this point. This male's normally not uh, circumvented in this manner. The only thing we ever had is a tip shot from the sword cut a ring out and it wouldn't even have injured the uh, person behind it. All you'd be doing is aiming at rings with the uh, like kind of shearing and you wouldn't be able to actually injure the person behind it. So let's see what happens. Oh! I did not hit the gel, but it didn't go in either. Bounced right out. Ah, yeah! Now, here's my problem with this. Everybody's all excited that our Legionnaire is alive and well, but without a shield, I honestly believe hitting over that ballistic gelatin is not going to damage the gelatin that much because it bounces. But a human body, we get all sorts of internal injury. Depending on how much padding he's wearing under here, which we only have 10 layers of cloth. We have 10 layers of cloth under here, plus the light shirt, the ballistic skeleton's under it, so we're hitting over something like flesh. I mean, it feels like a belly and pushing on it. It feels like a hard, like the guy's tightening his muscles up. It's a really hard gelatin. But yeah, it did not impale him, so he's not going to die from that kind of wound. But he could have some kind of internal injuries. That's all I'm saying. So we can't tell if, I mean, our Valkyrie or Legionnaire is all right, but she may be very badly injured. But we do know that she wasn't impaled by the shape, even though you would think the Bodkin shape would have went through there with the sealed rings and them silver soldered. No, didn't go through. All right, everyone requested it. Everyone wanted to see it. Lots of people were saying this. We're going to try our breastplate that we tested in very, uh, various videos with different spears. On the overall throwing slide, yes, it was possible to penetrate it somewhat. Uh, even the course that you had trouble going very deep, it only went a little over an inch. Uh, but what we're going to do is throw directly at the plate. I'll throw at the weakest point. There's no point in trying to go through that belly. It's doubly reinforced. It's not going to happen. Slightly hardened uh, steel. It's about like 15 to 16 gauge in different areas. Uh, almost two millimeters thick. Nah. Not gonna happen. But we're gonna see what happens when I throw it. Hopefully it doesn't damage the peel them too badly. Uh, but I honestly do think at this point going through gambesons and hardened leather and stuff like that will perform exceptionally well. 
even though it didn't go through our silver soldered mail. But anyway, let's see what happens here. Ah! Oh! That bent it all to hell. I hit a double section, not where I was aiming. But it did bend when it hit plate. A mighty hit. It hit straight on, and I hit this side of the breastplate right here. It dulled our point. It dulled our point, but it had no chance of piercing, and that was me throwing as hard as I did in the other video when it went clean through. So a 15th century breastplate slightly hardened, about uh, 15, 16 gauge hammered out. It's not going through. Uh, we uh, messed up the point quite a bit. Uh, we had some bins testing it, and I actually was able to straighten them out. So that means if they did have a pila that they recovered that was bent like we find historically, because we had one earlier, uh, you could possibly hammer it back out made out of uh, iron and use it if it didn't bend too bad where it cracked when you hammered it back. Because this, this is mild steel, they're only iron, so iron might crack easier when you try to hammer it back. Other than that, they're almost the same uh, identical. But I'm very impressed with it. It was still great what it did going through the shield. The shield was a high laminate, meaning very difficult to go through. Uh, it's, it showed nothing but pure penetration, and uh, even though it wasn't able to penetrate the mail, I have no doubt that if you hit somebody in mail like that, that they would feel it. You'd probably take the man off the field. I'm looking at how much force and impact that it actually hit, and in the midsection and solar plexus, it would at least wound them, if not, maybe kill them, breaking the xiphoid process in the center. Very possible. Uh, but anyway, I enjoyed it. Thank you, Adrian Watson, for sending this to us. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. We came back and uh, did exactly as you requested. We did the sealed mail, and we did the uh, breastplate. So uh, thanks for giving us all success on the other video. I hope you all like this video as well. Be sure and like us, subscribe to our channel, tell people about us, that helps us. Uh, if you can, help donate through uh, www.patreon.com uh, slash Thrand. You can donate monthly there to us if you like our content and you wanna see more of it and us be able to do it the way you want it done. And yes, we listen to you, we try to respond. Uh, you can also do a one-time donation at ThaneThrand at Yahoo.com, which is our PayPal ID if you want to do something like that. Or you can get a hold of me through email at the ThaneThrandYahoo.com or Gmail.com and inquire about maybe sending us some of your wares or stuff that you create. Like Adrian Watson's a blacksmith and he made this thing. He did an excellent job of doing historical representations of the later century Pila. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can do that with us. And be sure and go by and like us on Facebook. We have our uh, Thrand and Elgrim's Well of Remembrance. You can like us there and you'll see all our content as it comes up and anything else that we're interested in at the time or subjects we're covering. We'll link historical documentation, uh, cool articles, exciting, fun memes. Uh, you can also become a member of the Thane Thrand YouTube boat crew just by asking to join. And it's a closed group and you can discuss stuff with us privately there or show us whatever you, you like that you're interested in. So you might want us to, to uh, try to test out. Uh, link videos, other people's videos, what, what have you. Uh, we have a lot of experts there in lots of different fields. So if you have a question to ask there, somebody can probably answer you. We have people from all different time periods, from the Roman, ancient Greece, uh, Viking era, all the way up into late century uh, uh, dueling and duelists and pirates. We got everything. So anyway, just uh, hope you all enjoyed it and uh, have a happy Easter. Farewell.